Cal here at the ESPN Esports Desk. It's BlizzCon 2016. We're going to bring things down to the esports collegiate level with Adam and Tyler Rosen. Yes, they are twins, but there is a way to distinguish them. Usually it's the ears, right? Guys? It's the ears. It's totally the ears. Our ears are covered. So, Adam <laughs> has the part this way in the hair. Tyler has the hair that way parted. So, no, don't do that. Do not do that, okay? Adam, Tyler. Tyler on the far okay. side, Adam on the near side. So now we're all caught up. You guys are the founders, or the co-founders, pardon me, of TESPA. You're basically growing esports at the collegiate level. Totally. So, uh, first of all, tell us uh, the mission statement that at the core. What is TESPA? Give us that. Absolutely. So, at its core, TESPA is trying to establish esports on college campuses and make it just as big, just as compelling as traditional sports are on campus. So, when we look out and we see how when there's a football game or a basketball game on a campus and the university and the surrounding community comes together, that's really a moment in that community. We're cr trying to create that all across the United States and Canada with esports. And we've started doing that um, in a couple of ways, and we're really looking forward to continuing to expand upon that. So let's talk about why on college campuses first. You guys are businessmen. You guys decided that this is a need that needed to be filled. So why? Did, how did you identify esports and college? Yeah, um, so actually the way we kind of approached college was super organic. TESPO started um, when we were college students ourselves. We were at the University of Texas at Austin, and we loved video games. We loved Stark that was about to come out and we wanted to figure out how to take the students around us and engage them in tournaments for kind of intercollegiate rivalries for StarCraft. So we put up a few posters and lo and behold we, we were astounded by the amount of reception we saw and the amount of passion that that team had for esports and for gaming. So we took that passion, we took that a community that was formed and we made it our mission to expand it and to grow it and to see how far and how big we could make esports on that campus. Yeah. I think it's interesting because when you look at college esports specifically, it's different from traditional esports in the sense that what we have with college esports is we have all of these well-known universities that people have affiliations with, right? So if I'm a, a person who hasn't been exposed to esports before, and I see Byung versus Dark in the StarCraft II finals, I might not know what either of those players are, or what they mean, or what they stand for. But with college esports, if I see Berkeley is playing uh, Arizona State, in some way I'm going to have some sort of affiliation, whether it's a love, whether it's a rivalry. Um, and what we found is that through focusing on the college storylines and the college rivalries, we're able to create this level of consistency and this really a window into the space. So we've seen people through programs like Heroes of the Dorm, which was one of the leagues we hosted, come in who sometimes have never watched an esports game in their life, take a look at it, and then fall in love. Now, were there any colleges and universities across America that were more receptive to this idea? Totally. So we've hosted Here's the Dorm two years now. The first year in 2015, we didn't see a lot of colleges engaging in the program. It was very new to them. So and for those unaware, Heroes of the Dorm is the Heroes of the Storm tournament that happens across college campuses in America. Totally, okay. yeah. So last year we brought together something like 4,000 players to compete against each other. We filtered them down from a big open bracket into 64 teams and then filtered that down even further till the grand finals. So here's the dorm. This year we were actually pleasantly surprised by the amount of engagement we saw with universities. We saw universities like Arizona State get behind their teams, not only on social media, but actually physically on the university campus. Very cool. After the event, uh, the University of um, Arizona State brought their team, they kind of paraded them around the baseball game, at a baseball um, at a baseball game. They have posters for people to sign, so it was really unique to us, even that year of growth from 2015 to 2016, seeing what that change was like. And the top four teams, we saw this across all of their universities, UT Arlington, UConn, Tennessee. So we think it's only going to get bigger from here. The level of excitement and now engagement we see on the university level is, um, is continuing to grow. Now, Heroes of the Storm obviously is is one. Heroes of the Storm is what focusing on. Were there any other esports that they call it at the college level that people were really invested in? Yeah, absolutely. So recently, we launched the Tespa Collegiate Series, which is a long form league format that essentially, in one part of the year, challenges universities to come together, put together their best players, form a single team to compete against the single best team at other universities. Um, and the second part of the year focuses on hey, as many people who want to play can 
and play, and hopefully the best rise to the top and can get known. Um, right now we have that for Overwatch and for Hearthstone as well. And what we've seen is actually phenomenal response. All of these competitions uh, give out prize, uh, prize money as tuition. It's not about going home with a big check. It's about funding their education. Oh, nice. okay. So uh, today we have actually given out over $1.3 million in scholarships through the TESPA leagues and have actually engaged students in over 1,200 universities. So um, when we keep an eye on that, it's actually, like Tyler mentioned, it's growing year over year. And uh, we're excited to continue adding new games over the course of time, too. So Tyler, let me ask you this. Um, in terms of the viewership, people that are watching Collegiate Esports, do you guys have any metrics or any uh, estimates on how many people are watching that may not be esports fans per se, but are watching because their college is in it or their alma mater is in it? Totally. Um, so we don't have any metrics per se, but we've heard so many stories and so many anecdotes about people who don't really know what esports is, but have hooked in because they recognize the colleges. I mean, if we have Cal versus ASU and you've been to one of those schools, you have some kind of affiliation. Even if you haven't been to the school, you either you may hate one. Or you may love one just by association. So we find a lot of times that colleges are really a conduit to this mainstream audience who hasn't yet connected to esports. And we think it's a really powerful way to grow the audience and make sure more people become interested. We've seen a lot of times once they kind of had their interest peak, they love it. And there's no turning back from there. So there are reports out there that say that people who watch esports uh, streaming online aren't necessarily watching traditional sports. Yep. Are you right. noticing a rise in interest in esports alone on the call at the college level? Oh, totally. Absolutely. Yeah. So TESPA right now is made up of two primary pillars. We have a community pillar, and then a competitive pillar, which we talked a lot about. The community pillar is all about student organizations and growing individual communities. I think in the last year we've doubled in size. We have over 190 college campus chapters right now, um, and if you compare that to an average Greek organization, we're, we're top 15 worldwide. So I think that's a true testament to the amount of enthusiasm and the amount of interest on college campuses for people who want to be involved, even if they're not competing at the top level. Maybe they want to host an event. Maybe they want to um, simply be involved in the community for social aspects. We've seen a ton of interest, and that's something else that has been really special for us to see over the last year or so. And one thing I might add about that also is we're seeing a lot of people who traditionally are huge sports fans starting to come over and starting to see esports for the first time too. Um, it's really interesting actually. So Heroes of the Dorm, which we talked about, was actually broadcast live on ESPN and it was one of the first esports competitions ever for that. Um, and what we found is the first year we did it, it was shock. People said, wow, what is this? I don't get it. It's new. It's different. Um, last year, world of difference. Um, people are coming around um, recognizing it as, wow, this is a legitimate form of sporting competition. And it's something right now, to your point, there's, there's over 30 varsity programs, meaning 30 different universities at this point have looked at esports and said we're starting an official team they're scholarshipping athletes we have the conferences looking just at like it normal, trying to get involved sports. just like traditional yeah. sports and that's the growth we've seen in a year imagine where we'll be a couple years and from that's now 30 institutions across america have said we're going to make this a essentially like a varsity sport varsity totally. sport. Yep. Yep. wow phenomenal uh, recruit them from high school give them scholarships the whole, just like it does in sports. It's, yeah, it's so interesting. Fantastic. Sports, yeah, it, it's, it's, I mean, it's blown us away, and I, I think it's a really test. It's a testament to how far esports has come sure. and where it's going. Before we uh, let you guys go, a new hero of the documentary. You guys yes. are heavily involved. This is put out by Blizzard. Tell us about it, and how can people watch it? Absolutely. So with A New Hero, what we wanted to do was we wanted to really get together and tell a story about the evolution of esports through the eyes of esports leagues like Heroes of the Dorm. One of the most compelling things about esports, to us at least, is that it's so human at its core, right? It's about the drive to improve, to follow your favorite teams, to connect with each other. And we find that when people really sit down and they experience it, they fall in love. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to create a film that follows that human element and really shows at its core that it's really not that much different from any other form of competition, which we're so used to watching. So that's what the documentary is about. It's actually being released to the public next Tuesday, um, Tuesday morning. So we're absolutely thrilled. Where can to, they find it? They can find it on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch, I believe, yep. will have it. Um, and we'll be promoting that through our social channels. Um, if you would like to watch it, you can go to heroesofthedorm.com, and we'll have the links there.
Yeah, we're, we're really pleased with how it came out. I think, I mean, we, we've shown it to a lot of people internally, and everyone we talk to is proud to show this film to friends and family who don't really understand their interest in esports. It's an inside yeah. glimpse into who these players are, what drives them, and really what the industry is evolving to be. So we're super excited with it, and we hope that everyone out there will be also. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me here on the ESPN Esports desk. Guys, Adam and Tyler Rosen, co-founders of Tespa. Awesome. Thanks for having us. Thank you Got so it. much.